All right, guys, Garrett here for Vitesse Power Sports. I'm going to do your pre-delivery walk around on the Sea-Doo watercraft. This here is a GTI model. It is the 900 Ace model, but uh, it'll cross-reference pretty similar to a lot of the other Sea-Doo models. Um, we're going to start in the front here. To open this front latch on the GTI model and the Wake 155 model, you'll open it from, from that spot there. Uh, this is a semi-dry storage here inside. You'll notice uh, we have a fire extinguisher holder here. And then on the inside there, there is a safety kit uh, holder that sea offers as well. Now behind this um, spot here is gonna be your battery location and your fuse block. So that's pretty easy to access for, um, for during winterization and things to get that unhooked and, and pull that out. Your fuel fill is right here. Uh, so you'll open the hood to get to your um, fuel cap. Uh, moving to the controls. Uh, I don't have this one powered up, so I'm not going to um, light it up and, and walk you through the modes. But um, it's fairly uh, simple to understand. Um, this is your start button here. You press it once, it's going to light up the screen and power this thing up. If you hit it again and hold it, it'll start the machine. Now you don't want to start this out of water. Um, you need to be in the water to run this. Um, you know, it, you could do a brief fire to make sure the battery's got enough power. You know, for three seconds on and off, but you do not want to let this thing run out of water. Um, as you see here, we have a sport and an eco mode. So when you start this machine, it's going to start in a in a standard or a touring mode, and if you press the sport button, the screen is going to talk to you. It's going to tell you to let, it, let go of it and then press it again to activate the, the mode. When you activate sport mode, it's gonna uh, accelerate much faster. It's gonna be a different fuel curve um, to make this machine um, a little more thrilling. Um, there's also an eco mode. Eco mode's gonna be good for um, big lake cruises, river cruises, you're going long distances. You don't need the power all the time. Maybe it's rough water. It's gonna detune the throttle response and it's going to drop the top end speed of this machine. So that's eco mode. Now if you didn't know about either of these modes and you started in standard mode you think it was it was great and it's all you needed but once you get to play around with with either one of those then you realize that um, you know the machine can be a whole different um, handle a whole different way you know depending on the conditions. The controls over here uh, you got mode set and your toggle and that's just going to run you through the digital display so between miles per hour rpms some of these boats offer fuel consumption uh, gps um, temperature so that's how you're going to get into that um, by that mode button toggle and then set uh, set your favorite kind of thing um, i want to go over a thing called ibr override and ibr override is going to be a feature that sea has, if you were to suck up a ski rope or suck up uh, some bark or tree limbs and um, you get the boat, you know, you get towed out, get it up on land and you wanna be able to access the nozzle in the back. I'll just show you a quick glimpse of what I'm talking about. This is the nozzle and you have access into the jet pump from here. You also have access from the intake grate down underneath the boat. So when you get something stuck in, in the jet pump, you may need to, to work from both sides to get it out. And because this has never been powered up, right now the IBR chute, which is this piece here, it's already in the up position. So it's a good example of what I'm trying to get at here. The IBR override will get it up in this position so you can access the nozzle. But once this thing gets a battery in it and gets powered up, the memory will automatically always keep this chute down. So when you pull it out of the water, it's going to be down and you won't be able to access the nozzle. <clears throat> so the point of that is if you were working on this thing up on your trailer and, and uh, needed to override it, you're going to hit the, the red button once. It's going to fire this thing up. You're going to hold in the eye brake, which is the left side of the handlebar. And when you do that, it's going to flash on the screen. After a couple seconds, it'll say activate IBR override. And it's gonna give you directions using the set and the arrows to lift that chute up so that you can work on the, the jet pump. Um, we'll go over the controls since we're talking about the eye brake. Um, 
So these new sea have brakes, technically. The right side of the bars is your, is your gas. The left side of the bar is your brake. So how this works is you're gonna key this thing up. It's a radio frequency um, security key. It just pops on a ball here. And you hook this to your life preserver. You'd start the, uh, start the machine. When you start the machine, it's always gonna be in neutral. That's something new to jet skis. Uh, Sidhu invented in 08, I think. Um, so when you start it, it's not going anywhere. It's in neutral. If you want to go backwards, you hold in the brake. That activates reverse, idle reverse. Okay, you let, let go of the eye brake, you're back in neutral. You tap the gas, just give it a touch. Now you're in idle forward. Grab the brake again, you're in neutral. Um, if you hold the brake in, you're in reverse, then you can also give it gas, make it go faster in reverse. Um, that's how the controls work. Uh, I think that um, basically covers the essentials of, of the uh, buttons that we have on this one. They do give you a quick reference guide on, on these uh, CDUs. So some come with cruise, some come with ski mode, some come with slow mode. So these are um, directions on how to activate those different modes if your boat has those features. Um, so that is a waterproof uh, piece that you'll just keep in the box there. Um, one other control thing that I wanted to touch on is the learning key mode. So there is, on most of these boats, there are two keys that come with it. Yellow key, which is your fast key, your adult key, and your green key, which is your learning key. It says it right on it, learning. So you can program this key to different speeds. Uh, there's five different settings, and how, the, how you would do that is you have to have the learning, uh, I'm sorry, you have to have the fast key. It has to be in the machine. You'll hit the red button once, and, <clears throat> and you'll toggle with your mode button through the display with this machine off and you'll get into a learning key mode. And you can toggle through one, two, three, four, and five, which are all different speeds. Um, once you do that, when you put this key in, it'll be limited to, uh, I believe it's 25, 30, 35, or 40, right in there, basically. You can set five mile per hour increments. So it is also in the owner's manual, um, which we'll have tab for you. So, that is the controls, controls and the things. So we showed you the nozzle back here uh, and how this IBR works. Um, to give you just a quick, better understanding of the, the eye brake system, this chute here is gonna move in different positions like this. So when you're going forward, it's up, it's up in this position so the nozzle can spray uh, water back, make you go forward. But when you hit the, the eye brake, it drops the chute down and shoots all the water underneath the boat and kind of kicks your back end up and stops you really fast. So that's how it's all handled is by this chute right here. So that's what that does. These two things here are drain plugs. So when you're done using the boat, you want to get it up on your trailer or up on your lift and pull these plugs out and make sure there's no water in the hull. This here is your, um, your flush system or uh, how we would winterize it or... Uh, how you could run it out of water with a garden hose basically so you'd you'd run a, a hose in there and uh and uh turn it on basically so that it will circulate water and keep the exhaust system cooled while running um last thing back here maybe two more things there is a notice here on how to roll this boat back over if it is tipped so if you go upside down there's one direction that this is supposed to be rolled back over um, to make sure that we don't get oil in places that it shouldn't be. Um, the second thing I want to touch on is you do have two uh, tie points here. So if you had to tow somebody home or if you wanted to tie this down on your trailer, um, these would be two points that you could go from. You also have another point here which you could use to tie down to your trailer or if you're going to pull um, a young tuber skier, um, you could you know pull from that point there. Uh, there is a capacity on that, so we're going to want to reference that in the manual so that you're not putting four people on a tube and trying to pull pull it off of that off of that point. Um, 
these are three passenger units. All the all the GTIs are, all the wakes are. Um, so this is a three person seat. And to open the seat, there's a release in the back here. And uh, and you're just gonna pick it up, take it off. Some of the boats have a uh, hinge system um, where it, there's a shock that'll hold it open. And some of the boats now are a two-piece seat, so it's a little bit lighter to remove. Uh, it just depends which one you got. Um, this is the 900. This is also the spark motor. So this is a three-cylinder uh, four-stroke, um, and it's it's uh, you know 900 cc's roughly. Uh, where some of you uh, folks buying the GTIs and the Wakes have a different motor than this one. It'll look a little different. Um, it'll be a 1503 triple. Uh, so that'd be your 130 horse, your 155 horse boats, and now the 170 horse boat uh, will all have a three cylinder uh, 1503. It's just a little bigger uh, top end on it there um, when you look at it. And the arrangement of the oil filter and the oil check will be a little bit different than this, but it'll look the same. Um, so this one, your oil check, your dipstick is right here. It's going to be a quarter turn, and you're going to have a, um, a a low, a minimum, and a maximum line. You're going to want to maintain uh, in between there. Um, now you have to have this engine warm to check it. So this is something you're going to do uh, dockside. You're going to let this thing idle in the water, and then let it rest for a minute or two, and then check your oil so that you don't find yourself overfilling it. Um, spark plug location right at the top of the engine here. Coolant bottle. This these CDs are closed loop cooling uh, to the engine. So this is uh, antifreeze, just like your car. Let's say that's going to be pumped through the engine to keep it cool. Uh, the advantage of that is you don't have to worry about um, the, the system getting plugged up by sand or debris and counting on that lake water to come through and cool the engine. Now the engine is self-sufficient, basically. You're only counting on that lake water to come through and cool the exhaust system. So you still have to winterize the boat. You still have to pump it with RV antifreeze um, so that you don't have water uh, in the tubes and pipes um, over the winter. So you still want to do that. Um, the last thing in here to touch on um, would probably just be the oil filter location. Um, it'll have three, three bolts. Um, on that and on the 1503 it's on the right side of the engine and on this uh, 900 it's on the left side but they look they have the same top on them so easy to to tell uh, what it is what else uh break in break in on this thing or on all the sea dues a 10 hour break in so before you're doing any water sports racing across the lake at long distances um you want to drive it normal you want to vary rpms you don't want to idle for 10 hours you don't want to be wide open for 10 hours do a little bit of everything uh short burst of wide open throttle but you want to stay around that three quarter throttle most of the time and um 10 hours there's no maintenance required after that you're going to do your first maintenance when you bring it in in the fall for winterization uh, we'll do the oil and filter at that point um, we flush it and pull the battery um, check it for recalls basically and that's about all there is uh, for maintenance on these things um, one other thing to touch on would be um, how to tie it to the dock and uh, this boat has um, a spot right up here in the steering column where you can run a dock line through um, and there's one on both sides and then of course uh, you have your, your D-ring in the back here as another location so um, everybody does things different the way I like to do it um, I'll take a 15 or a 20 foot dock line and I will uh, cinch it to this spot or uh, to this spot generally so I'll go right around the, the column or I'll use the actual points they have and I'll come to the cleat on the dock do a figure eight and then I'll come to here and I'll do a, a a knot around the, the handlebar here or to the D loop and create a bit of a V with just one dock line. And the reason I do that is it keeps it evenly uh, disper you know, distributed off the dock. And the other reason is um, just easy to keep track of one rope instead of two because it's pretty common for people to lose track of a rope and get it sucked through into the jet pump housing and, and then you're out of luck. So 
you want to be sure to keep that thing stowed away until you absolutely need it and then get it out and, and, and get docked up and as soon as you're heading out put it back in storage so you don't lose track of it and, uh, and suck it through the uh, jet system. Um, I think that's all I have. Enjoy your new boat.